Hello, I'm Mike Diamond at Colson Art Printing, and we are very honored today to have a, um, a fine artist, Melissa B. Tubbs. Um, she's a fine artist that works in pen and ink, architecture primarily, and um, it's just wonderful to have you today. Well, thank you. I appreciate your having me. You've been doing uh, primarily architectural um, pen and ink for 20 years and professionally for 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us how you got started in the middle. Well, uh, my sister needed a Christmas present for her father-in-law one year and uh, asked me to uh, draw a picture of his house and she was going to provide the picture so I said okay and it was the first pen and ink drawing I'd ever done. Nobody taught it in school, college, anything like that and so I'd make a line and I'd stop, you know, take a deep breath and tell okay where does the next line go because I knew I couldn't erase or fix big mistakes and so um, that one was a success and uh, word of mouth I got more and more commissions and uh, um, I spent 25 years in the publishing field and it got to the point where I needed to find more time to do the drawings um, or quit doing them because it was getting so frantic trying to get them done and work a full-time job so sure. I made yeah. the decision to leave my office job and haven't looked back. <laughs> well, and that's been 14 years or so. Yeah, about 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. And you do a lot of commissions, I think it's a lot. Yes. Uh, I started out doing people's homes and I've done uh, a bigger variety of commissions as time has gone on. I've, um, the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts commissioned me to do um, some drawings of their facility and I think I've done about 13 for them. and. Um, and for the Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital in Albany. Mm -hmm. uh, I've just finished this and, and uh, so they're getting more interesting and further afield. <laughs> yeah, that is great, which is what Ross brought Melissa to us today. We did a, an offset um, lithograph print uh, for different um, conditions of the uh, Phoebe Putney Hospital and um, that's what we have here. She's done the pencil signing of them, limited edition. So that's um, Right. This would be a great thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, this is in celebration of their 100th anniversary. That's right. And yeah. they had me do one of the original building built in 1911, and then um, this 33 inch one of all the buildings that are on the campus now. And then uh, we focused in on a couple of uh, specific um, parts of the campus that they really wanted to highlight. Mm -hmm. but it was, it's been fun to do it. It's like a puzzle, I guess. It's, it's kind of what I get. It is. It is. Yeah. Together. Yeah. I start out with a contour drawing, which is just kind of basically outlining mm -hmm. everything to make sure I've got the perspective and the shapes correct. And right. then I start putting layers of lines down, um, and that's when I start building up the volume, giving the three-dimensional shape to to things and. Um, that kind of thing, and then when I go back and put the final shadows in, that's what really pulls the whole thing together. And range of my values. That's yes. That's a very important thing for yes. well, for all artists, but especially for you, you discovered early, I think. Right, right. Well, working <coughs> in black and white values is are basically the um, what you are dealing with from mm -hmm. from white to light gray, gray all the way to black. Uh, I read an article once that said artists are either really good with values or really good with color. Mm -hmm. And the great ones like Monet and <laughs> mm -hmm. Rembrandt and all, they're, they're good at, real good at both. And yeah. uh, um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm good at the values, but what I've discovered is the more I've done this and really learned more and more about values, it has also taught me about color. And I'm sure it would be the same for painters and learning about value, but the value and getting the dark darks um, is what makes a drawing pop mm -hmm. and really gives it the depth and um, the, the three-dimensionality that, that uh, gives it the realism, you know, makes it look like what it is. I noticed you um, themes, you see, what I've read and have seen, uh -huh. sounds like themes you take a particular subject you think is right. order for, well for a lot of artists to do that as well? Well, um, I think it's a good mm -hmm. way to get, um, and particularly 
an artist starting out to have a cohesive body of work um, because they tell you, you know, your, your work should um, thematically be consistent or the medium and the way you handle it and that kind of thing. And it's kind of fun to do a series, like I do one that I call Doors and Porches, especially here in the South with all the wonderful old homes and, oh, yeah. and things like that. And exactly, yeah. exactly. And then um, I love, not, not only do I do architecture as whole buildings and pieces of buildings, but ornamentation also. Right. And so, um, you know, statues or, um, in Montgomery, there's these large lion head masks that used to be at the top of the bank building, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. And um, I, I'm doing a series called Terracotta Faces, mm -hmm. and I'm including those um, in it, and even urns and people's yards and things that are you know out of terracotta that have they have lion heads or goat heads or you know all kinds of different. Um, Carved or molded ornamentation that's well, fundamental. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. so and I, I, I consider myself a preservationist with pen and paper, because the architects mm -hmm. and the artisans, the craftsmen mm -hmm. um, that have built uh, our our architectural environment um, were artists, you know, in their own right, and I feel like I'm celebrating and preserving what these artists before me have created. That's a great thing. Good words. Tell us about the Strathmore project. Um, <clears throat> no, the, yeah, that was that's this, this, uh, really neat. Really yeah. uh, a neat thing. Um, I had they Strathmore Artist Papers um, does a quarterly newsletter by um, internet email and I had uh, checked in to see about if I could get an article about my work in it and and they ran it, and then a few months after that, um, I got an email asking if I'd be willing to work with them on creating new covers for their drawing pads. And um, you said sure. I said most definitely. <laughs> so um, they asked me to do the drawing, the 400 series drawing paper, mm -hmm. uh, smooth surface. And then um, about eight, nine months later, I got another email asking if I would do something for their Bristol 500 series paper, um, which was the, the first one I did an architectural drawing of the lion heads, and the second one they wanted their logo drawn um, mm -hmm. in, um, in a three-dimensional fashion, and so I did that, and um, it, it's, they were wonderful, wonderful people to work with. It was a, uh, both projects uh, great to do, and it's uh, Really pretty exciting to think that my drawing is going to be on a bunch of drawing pads in any place that sells drawing materials uh, all over the world. So. Yeah, I was about to say they're worldwide, so yeah. it'll be anywhere and everywhere. Exactly. So, so that's that's been uh, a neat thing to do just for myself, appreciating how significant it is for an artist to work with a, a paper company like that on a on project like this. So. Well, it's good for them as well. Yeah, it's yeah. well, it's as they say, a win win situation for everybody That's involved. Right. Well, thank you for coming down today. I know you had a lot of work to do. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, almost but, finished. Yeah, almost there. <laughs> but it's, it's been my pleasure. I have enjoyed uh, coming down and meeting everybody and being here, and maybe we'll do it again. <laughs> I hope so. So, y'all be sure and post your comments. And uh, uh, again, this is Melissa B. Tubbs. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you.